So we officially opened our woodworking business during a global pandemic. Great idea. But it's officially been 30 days since we started. So in this video, we're gonna go over what we accomplished, our sales, and how much money we made. Spoiler alert, we're not rolling in dough yet, but we're not worried about that. Stick around to the end to see why. We're Jenny and Davis. We fly through hurricanes for research and build furniture for fun. A while ago, we came up with a business plan to sell quality furniture, which brings people together. Follow along as we build our business empire. Empire? Yes, Jenny, big goals. Okay, we're starting an empire. Maybe one day it'll span beyond the garage. So we started out the month by doing a shop tour for you guys where we built these workbenches. So a lot of you saw that video, but if you didn't, check it out, the link's right up here. We rearranged a bunch of stuff and we were basically just getting ready for production. Part of the rearranging was due to our drum sander because the fine dust it created really was not playing well with our Harbor Freight dust collector. It couldn't filter out all the really fine dust. It was getting caked up and gross. So what we did is we got this guy right back here, our brand new Laguna P-Flux dust collector. We'll have an affiliate link to this guy in the video description right below the like button. And it's working much better. It actually does filter out all the fine particles from the drum sander. <laughs> We also turned all of these board blanks that were on the shelf previously into finished cutting and charcuterie boards, and uh, then they were all ready for orders. That way we could focus the rest of this month on selling instead of building. Speaking of sales, we got our first legit organic order for the business. We had a family friend that ended up wanting a stove cover. Apparently they also call them noodle boards. I didn't know that, but the big stove covers are called noodle boards. So we built one of those. It turned out really well. They ended up liking it. And we thought like the procedure to make it was so similar to all of our cutting board procedures that we made it its own product and put it on our website too. And that's when things slowed to a grinding halt. So we started hitting the pavement and went out to find ourselves some sales. So a lot of you may have seen in a video we did earlier that we started going to open houses. All right, first real estate agent, super nervous. Number one. I don't know why I hate this so much. We can do this. Yeah, we got this. Let's go. Basically, we just showed up at the open houses and gave the listing agent a free board with all of their information engraved on it to take them on the same emotional experience that their homeowners would go on if they received this as a closing gift. So we went to 15 open houses total, but for over half of them, the listing agent wasn't the one there. And as nice as it was to say, oh, well, we'll make you your own board too. We're, you know, if we get your information, we'll mail it to you. But it really didn't pack the same punch as like handing a board to a person with their own name on it and making it feel like a very, personal gift because the ones that we did that and we were successful went so well when it was the actual person receiving their own personalized gift 
they loved it. Like they didn't even know what to say half the time. We've already sold two of them and it's only been a couple weeks. So the method of approaching individual realtors was proving to be pretty inefficient. So we thought, why don't we reach out and try to go to some of their monthly or weekly meetings where we can approach multiple realtors all at one time. So we started cold calling realtors, seeing if we could get into their meetings. And out of 10 cold calls, I only got one call back. These realtors are screening their calls before they ever answer or call back. So we've got to find a better method. And then we started looking for realtors who were on Instagram. We would just search local hashtags and search for the realtors. And then we ended up messaging about 30 of them. And out of the 30 we messaged, we got about four really, really positive responses. And we sent those people free cutting boards. So all in all, between all of those methods I just talked about, we gave away 13 boards and got seven really solid, good responses. And like I said, that's already produced two sales. But of all the people who haven't quite responded yet, we can still follow up with them. So the story on those people isn't really over yet. We still have lots of opportunity out there that we can take advantage of. And the relationships we've made with all these people throughout this process, I think will bring us a lot more sales too. So with all the information we learned with all these different sales methods, we found a few sticking points. For example, the realtors weren't even going to this website that we had at the bottom of our card. They just like didn't want to type it in. So we added a QR code to our little um, board insert cards just to make the process even faster. We also optimized a few things on our checkout page so that people could get in, out, order a board way faster than they could before we fixed it. Because these realtors are so busy and the last thing they want to have to do is track us down and give us the order in person or tell us about issues. We just made it fast. They're in, out, they can do it in under 30 seconds on our website. All right, so the moment you've all been waiting for the numbers. So after selling all of these boards and the stovetop cover and working our butts off for 30 days, we made a total of $612. Now, that's very disappointing. If you subtract materials and labor from that, we've only made $412 of profit. And to be honest with you, that's a little frustrating to us. I mean, this is not our first business. We, this is our second go around at a woodworking business. Now granted, it's a completely different business plan, but we just kind of expected to get the ball rolling a little bit sooner. It would be really easy for us to blame things like, oh, COVID-19, we can't meet as many people. Oh, we have to spend time making YouTube videos on Jenny and Davis. So that distracts from our times making sales. Or we could say that, you know, we don't know anybody. We, we literally, when we moved to Houston a year ago, we had one email address of a friend of a friend. That's the only person that we we knew in Houston and we didn't even know them. We just had their email address. But if you know us, if you've been following us for a while, you know that we take responsibility for everything that happens. So instead of blaming all those things, what did we do or not do to not get it to work? So number one, I think part of the problem is that we had too high of expectations for money anyway in the first 30 days. What we're doing is a slow build business plan. We are building systems to handle a hug of death. We shouldn't be angry that we haven't had the hug of death yet. We're ready for it. We can like at this point, we can do about 500 cutting boards a month in addition to like larger custom furniture pieces. So we're ready to grow. It's just, it takes a lot longer than 30 days to get word of mouth going, to get a reputation, to get customers, to get a network of people in such a big area as Houston to make an impact. Plus chasing money is a losing formula. We all the time, we say, focus on the money coming in, not the money coming out. But what we mean by that is like, focus your efforts on trying to bring money in. Don't focus on the money, focus on what brings you the money and the money will come as a byproduct. I, I think I've got a better example. So to the whiteboard. All right, so when we're flying through hurricanes, I promise this will make sense. But when we're flying through hurricanes, we're trying to get to the eye, right to the very center. So we're here in our little airplane. That's an airplane, I promise. So we're flying this direction. Now the problem is that the wind is coming from this direction. So if we try to point towards the center, we're gonna get blown off course because the wind is pushing us away. So we have to point our airplane in a different direction. We have to point off to the side so that the wind will push us to the eye of the hurricane. The eye of the hurricane here represents money. 
So if we set a course for systems and relationships, all of the business forces will push us to where we wanna be, where the money is. So you can't set a course for winds of fortune, or you'll hear voices say, carry on my wayward side. Money is a byproduct of pursuing a good business system and building good relationships. So at the end of the month, only making $412 profit in our first 30 days, that doesn't upset us. I think it upsets us, but it's not a death sentence. It doesn't mean we're doing anything inherently wrong. It just means we have to keep feeding. We have to keep planting those seeds that are gonna eventually sprout and bring us what we really want. But all that being said, like out of the sales that we have made, we got a really high profit margin, 67%. So I think we're charging appropriately. We just have to get more sales. And honestly, that's twice as much work as actually building it. And that's what most people who try to start a woodworking business just don't understand is that the sales requires more work than just building the stuff. If you want to depend on the income. If you just want it to all be bonus nachos gravy money, then by all means, the products will sell themselves, the word of mouth will sell it for you. But if you're trying to depend on the income, you gotta put in work to make the money. And another nice positive thing to end on is that sales is just a numbers game. Even a terrible salesperson, if they get in front of enough people, they will find the ones that are ready to buy from anybody. So it's just a numbers game for us. We gotta keep making calls, we gotta keep reaching out, we gotta keep making relationships, we gotta keep introducing ourselves. And even though we've got a lot of factors working against us, it's a winning formula. That's been this month's recap. Let us know if you have any questions about what we've done down in the comments. Join the Stud Stack. If you want to see what we're doing day to day and ask questions and get immediate answers, join the Stud Stack. For makers who have a business, it's a paid group, so you know that the only people in there are really serious about growing and helping others grow alongside them. Again, links to everything we talked about will be in the description below the like button. And uh, yeah, we'll see you on the next one. It's home, guys.